The best thing that comes out of a game like this for us is we had an opportunity to develop our team as a whole by, by being able to play some really young players. We feel really good about our ones and, and, and what they can do, but we know it's going to be a long season, so to have the opportunity to play a lot of players uh, helps you develop your team, so we're able to get that accomplished. Um, again, you know, we wanted to start fast. I thought that we did that in, in all three phases. You know, but there's still some things we got to get corrected. Um, you know, we had a few too many penalties, the missed tackles. Uh, we had a few penalties there where we were a little sloppy with our alignments with receivers. We had a touchdown call back. And so those are all correctable moments. And, you know, what I hope is you usually as a team make your biggest jump from week one to week two. And, uh, you know, we will watch the tape. We'll try to get uh, uh, the things correct that need to be corrected. And then we'll... Uh, Get, celebrate this for 24 hours and it's on to our next, uh, our next opponent. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on capitalsportsblog.com and terptalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. In coming to the Jack Litch uh, Law Group office, I felt very at ease. Um, I was treated very kindly and I felt that this is the person that I wanted to work with. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. Call the big dogs, the Jack Lynch Law Group. Thank you for these fans who haven't seen before. Yeah, you know, Josh kind of showed what we saw in camp. Uh, he's really consistent, as we've always said. You know, he's a coach's kid, and uh, you know my affinity for coach's kids. He understands football. Though he did have a little snafu there. We had a third and five, and he threw the ball down the field. And you know, but those are some of the things we'll get corrected. But you know, I was pleased with the way he started. You know, he missed the deep ball early. The ball came out late. You know, Howard came in with the plan that they were going to zero pressure us to play a bunch of man, which forced us to throw the ball early. And I was glad to see us be able to make some adjustments and then get going with the, you know, being able to manage versus all the pressure that they brought. Coach, you, you guys held Howard to under 100 total yards in the afternoon, 0 for 11 on the third down in the first half. What was the prior? Or what was the priority today? What was the focus? And what was the execution? On the well, I thought we executed really well. I mean, you know, going into the game and our philosophy again uh, on the defensive side of the ball is we want to be aggressive and we want to attack. You know, I thought we did a good job of out in the box, you know, with the, their quarterback and his ability to make plays on the perimeter, you know, that really concerned us going into the game. So we did a good job with our defensive ends and outside backers of really keeping them in the pocket. We wanted them to have to win the game in the pocket. And, uh, you know, Coach Hoke and his staff did a great job of putting together a plan. Our guys did a good job executing it. You know, anytime you can get a shutout, uh, that's kudos to the defense because those are hard to come by. Um, so I was pleased with the effort, but again, we had some missed tackles in there. Um, we, we had a few missed assignments that we gave up a couple of uh, explosive plays, but I'm hoping that we get in there and watch the tape and get those things corrected. Emotions really are on the bus ride and you know, that's like the quiet before a storm and a lot of things kind of go through your mind as a coach. Uh, as the head coach driving in from the hotel to the stadium, uh, a lot of things play through my mind. Um, but once we get here, you know, I, I become mechanical in that there's things we got to stay on schedule uh, with recruiting and all the other pregame festivities. You really don't have a lot of time to be emotional about it. So, um, you know, I do go driving in. There were some uh, memories of, of what it's like to and how far and, and, and where I am to be able to lead a program that I grew up with before. Uh, but then once we got here, it's all the business. And kind of like to tell our guys, we want to make sure we have emotion, but we don't want to be emotional. Um, looking at the first half, I don't have the exact numbers, but I think it was like 15 runs and maybe like 25, 30 uh, passes. Was that, was that about what you were thinking you would see going in? And was any part of that trying to keep running backs healthy and maybe getting to see what you have in the pass game at all? No, not at all. I mean, you know, if you watch the game, they put zero pressure. They brought linebackers, they brought guys from all over the field, which makes it hard to run. So when we talk about being balanced on offense, that's being able to do both really well because if someone's going to try to take the run away from us, which 
we've got good running backs and they made the decision to stop the run, we were able to effectively throw the football and, and, and made some adjustments to manage the pressure to get the ball off, which we, we didn't do early in the game. Um, so, you know, we're going to continue to try to be balanced in that if a team wants to sell out to stop the run, we have skill on the perimeter and we've got some quarterbacks that can make throws. And, I thought Piggy did a great job, came in and hit some deep balls, and Josh, you know, atoned from the early miss on the double move and came back and threw a few balls in there. So, again, you know, it was dictated off of what they were doing to us defensively. Mike, I take it that you were not aware that you were one point short of a school record for points. Uh, in a game like today, is it hard to, to, to stay aggressive and, and without making it look like you're running up the score, I mean, just letting guys play. No, I mean, we made the decision at halftime, you know, we made some adjustments to be able to run the ball even when they outnumbered us, and, and, and we still were able to kind of pop a few in there. But, you know, we've got to call our game. You know, one of the things, uh, as I said earlier, we have to develop our young players, and the only way you develop them is by executing your offense, defense, and special team schemes. And when I talked to Ron after the game, you know, he understood that we weren't trying to run the score. That's not we respect the game, we have respect for the way it should be played. But we also have to develop our team. And again, you know, we feel good about our ones and it was great to be able to get so many young players some uh, meaningful minutes for us to be able to coach them up and uh, because we'll need some of these guys as the game as the year goes on. Mike, uh, you, you talked right out of your shoe about uh, yeah. for, you know, never getting a second chance to make a great first impression. Um, this kind of new era, how important is it to the program and to you to have a day like this that focuses things focuses things forward? You got Syracuse next week um, from in a global perspective. I mean, that's how we, we operate. I think from the time that we've arrived here on campus as a staff and as the new football family, everything we talked about was maximizing it. And it today was the game against Howard. We were going to maximize every opportunity we had during the course of the game. Uh, we'll celebrate it for 24 hours. We'll get back in here on Monday. Sunday's their day off, and we'll start putting together a game plan uh, for Syracuse. But, you know, for us, it's always being in the moment. We, we don't look back. We're not, you know, thinking of things that happened in the past and not looking too far uh, forward. It's about taking care of business right now, and I thought we did a good job today. Mike, uh, over here. Uh, when, when you, to build off Don's question, when you have a second half like that where things were out of hand as they were, is it hard to evaluate that kind of stuff? And, is it, and how well did you think your guys stay dialed in with the result, basically? Well, it's not hard to, to evaluate because, you know, for us at that time, we knew we needed to make some adjustments because we didn't want to keep throwing the football. And so I thought Scotty and the offensive staff did a good job of putting together a plan to be able to run the ball without having to incorporate the pass. Uh, and then for us, when you look at the, you know, we don't have penalties, we don't have a lot of sloppy play, and they, they still brought pressure, and still brought guys running through. So fundamentally, there's some things maybe on offense that that we got to get corrected with some of the younger players. You know, we, we were able to get our, our first get first team guys out of the game. Uh, none of them played meaningful second half minutes, except maybe some guys on special teams because of some of the depth issues there. But you know, it is an already evaluated. I didn't think we were sloppy in terms of penalties and guys not being aligned correctly and just a lot of missed tackles. I thought we played a pretty clean game, but we still have some fundamental things that probably clean up. Can you talk about the depth after the position and what you saw from them today? Yeah, that's one of the positions, as we talked about, you know, where we had depth, uh, you know, coming in. That was a position that we felt we had some numbers and you know, it was just a matter of a lot of work and experience, and then we lost Jay Sean very early in camp. And so we needed some guys to step up, and I thought today, you know, guys like Dante Demas showed up, Brian Cobb showed up, DJ Turner uh, showed up, and, and, and they, they did things today that we've seen throughout camp. Um, and, and it was good to see because hopefully we'll gain some confidence from it. And, you know, I, I think we're going to need all those guys to be playmakers for us, to be the diverse offense we want to be. So. I was pleased with the way they uh, they managed to manage uh, man coverage and we won some uh, one on one maps. Coach, uh, right here in the So you said you were impressed with your ones. Was there anybody in particular on the young guys on uh, offense or defense that impressed you today? You know, because of so many bodies in and out of there, I can't say that I saw you know, uh, a 
who executed the best. You know, I thought the, the two offensive line, I mean, a guy like Briar Gaddy, who moved over two and a half weeks ago maybe to guard, played a lot of meaningful snaps. And, you know, he's only going to get better with every snap he gets. And, you know, I think Austin Fontaine and Evan all did a good job. I mean, mostly the guys up front because of what they uh, presented to us. Um, defensively, you know, I, I, you see some of those young guys flying around, Cortez, Andrews, made some plays, Fanage, uh running around, made some plays. And it was, just, it was good to see guys like Deontay Banks and, and Gator out there covering man-to-man -man coverage and just getting meaningful reps. So until I watch it, it's hard to really gauge who played well at the twos. But I think overall, their execution wasn't bad because we didn't go out and have a bunch of sloppy play, a bunch of punts, a bunch of missed tackles. And, and that was good to see for a first, uh, first game. To your left in the back. I know people like to ask you offensive questions, but to me, the defense didn't give up all day. There were so many tackle for losses. You took their, their quickness away with that relentless rush. What was the secret to getting them off their game so early and sticking with it all day? Well, the big thing is we wanted to start fast, and we've said that our philosophy on defense is to be aggressive. Uh, we had a game plan where we wanted to keep them in the pocket. He was a guy that showed on film that he extends plays with his feet outside the pocket and, and now you've got to go plaster the receivers as he runs around. So what we basically said is we wanted him to have to win in the pocket and I thought we did a good job of containing him while still getting the vertical push to force him into some of those negative plays. You know, in the run game, it's just a matter of outnumbering them in a box and forcing them to throw, you know, to beat man-to-man -man coverage. And you know, they didn't have a lot of time uh, based on how we played. Coach, um, <clears throat> but uh, the two grad transfer linebackers, uh, Shaq and Keandre, each has at least one sack today. Um, you know, can you just speak to their kind of debut and the impression that they made, and, and how you see them kind of elevating the defense this year? Yeah, both of those guys are high motor, high effort guys, and they've improved our defense just with their presence and how you know the habits and behaviors that they have. I mean, these guys show up to work. Tuesday, Wednesdays are our big practice days, and, and they go 100 miles per hour. Um, they're guys that do things the right way off the field. They take great care of their bodies, and their impact has been very meaningful on our team because others have taken notice to the way they do business. So that part has been great to see, and it was good for those guys. You know, neither one of them played a lot of minutes at other places, but for them to get games and have the type of game they had today, I thought both did some great things as did all of our grand transfers. You know, Tyler Mabry made a couple of big catches. Had to kept his foot from the and one made a great catch, great effort on so I was pleased with all the grand transfers and what they wanted to take on. You mentioned the wide receivers as a whole, in particular, not taking missing it. Did you know coming into this game his big playability, and did you try to game plan to get him in those opportunities maybe down the field? I mean, we, we said it, the things that we saw Ryan Cobb do today, Dante Demas, uh, you know, Daryl Jones, we, we've seen that in practice. Um, and so those guys played the way they practiced the last couple of weeks. So we thought they all had the, the ability. You know, Dante is a big, long, fast guy that builds speed and can be a matchup problem because of his size. I thought the quarterbacks did a good job of putting the ball up and giving them opportunities to make the plays. And again, based on what they did to us defensively, it forced us to have to throw the ball and those guys made plays, which is expected. <clears throat> you know, at the end of the game, when you have a chance to, you know, make the field goal, you know, one second over fourth down, and, you know, ends up stopping the scoring at 79, was that done to honor Jordan McNair and kind of what went into that decision? No, I mean, it was done to have respect for our opponent. You know, the funk broke it out of there. You know, I was glad he got tackled, you know, in a, in a perfect storm. Got into a, a situation where we were trying to manage the clock. You know, we had the ability to tag our runs to make sure that if we break them all and that they go down, which, you know, you do that and that's kind of disrespectful. You score, it's disrespectful. So we tried to manage it, but again, we still have to develop our team and uh, develop up front our offensive line. Again, that's an area of depth where we have concern. And so uh, it was good to see those guys come in, but had no idea about. 
starting is it early in the game, uh, Josh seems to have a lot of pressure on him, especially coming from the blind side. Uh, how concerning is that to you in terms of trying to get that position solidified? Well, it wasn't concerning because it wasn't because we didn't block him, it was because we didn't have enough people to block him. They brought zero pressure and going into this game, we weren't aware of what they would be. And that's why we talked about adjusting, it was going to be really big. And so we made the adjustments after the first series, we got extra blockers on there to condense some formations to help uh, protect the extra numbers in the box and we were able to make some big plays out on the perimeter. But um, just looking at it from afar without having studied it with the zero pressure stuff, they just outnumbered it. It wasn't as if the opposition wasn't blocking and they brought more guys than we had in protection. We have time for two more so we get the players in here. Coach, you're right. Yeah. Coach, it took a while for Josh to find his stride. Uh, without looking at the film, what impressed you about uh, you know, how he ran the offense, his day? His poise, you know, he's a guy that's really cool under pressure. Sometimes for me, it's too cool for school because he's just so, uh, I like to see him play a little faster with his feet, be a little faster in his decision making. Uh, some of that can be attributed to the, the new system and just he's a half a second behind on some of the throws. You know, the deep ball early is the one that st stands out to me. We had a double move and kind of the ball should have thrown a little more anticipation. He held on to it as an under throw. But um, I was pleased with him. I mean, his voice really stands out to me as a leader. Um, his ability to you know, make short throws and get some tough throws with people in his face and some of the quick game stuff. So I was pleased with Josh. Thank you very much.